In the previous lesson, what we did was spend some time talking about common assault for the purposes of non-fatal offences in the criminal law. This lesson is going to focus on the next of the non-fatal offences, which is, of course, battery. Uh, we'll get on to looking at what battery is, how it is defined, what the actus reus for battery is, as well as the prerequisite mens rea that is established or required in order to establish a successful uh, prosecution of battery. So, fundamentally, we remember from the previous lesson that common assault required there not to be the actual physical application of violence that was unlawful against an individual, but rather the causing of the victim to apprehend the immediate application of violence against the individual. And we use the example of squaring up to another individual, getting into an argument with someone, squaring up to them um, as a sort of way of, um, uh, of indicating that you're ready to have a fight or you're ready to attack them or raising your fists or waving a knife at them or something. All of these things do not represent the actual application of violence. They instead represent the apprehension of violence. Well, when we talk about battery, we can think about the actual attacking of an individual. This is what battery is. Battery involves the actual attacking of the individual. In fact, battery can almost be seen as the logical conclusion to what was established in, uh, in, in an assault. If I was to raise my fist to somebody and I cause them to immediately appreciate the fact that there's going to be an unlawful application of violence against them, then this would be assault. If I then go and take this to the logical conclusion and I actually do throw a punch and hit them, um, then this would be battery. So, in terms of the actus reus for battery, you can understand that this is quite easy to understand. Uh, in fact, it makes, it makes battery a very easy thing to understand, both in terms of the actus reus and the mens rea of the offence. So, the actus reus of battery involves the actual application of unlawful force against the victim on the part of the defendant. So, again, contrasting this to common assault, the idea of assault was the apprehension of the application of unlawful violence, whereas battery is the actual application of unlawful violence against the victim on the part of the defendant. When it comes to the mens rea for battery, well, again, this also has very similar uh, requirements to that of the uh, uh, mens rea for assault. The defendant has to first intend to apply unuse for, uh, unlawful force, or they can do so recklessly, i.e. they acted in a way which they should have reasonably foreseen would have led to the application of unlawful force against an individual. In terms of a number of cases to illustrate these points, I want to first illustrate the point from the case of R. Martin from 1881. It illustrates that the direct application of force need not be a requirement for a conclusion of battery to be reached. What do I mean by this? Well, in this case, we're talking about a defendant who had turned the lights out in a crowded theatre and in addition to this, had placed an iron bar over the exit to stop people from getting out. And so what happened as a result of this was that because people started to panic um, as a result of the lights being turned out, they tried to run out of the theatre, not knowing that there was a metal bar over the, uh, over the door, which then caused a number of them to be injured in the process. So given these facts, the actual application of force was not done by the defendant. The defendant didn't actually apply force to these individuals. They just created the conditions necessary to allow force to be applied by way of the iron bar, stopping them from getting out and people running and getting crushed and, and hurt in different ways. It was a more indirect application of force, if you will. Um, but this still was a conviction on the part of the defendant. They were still convicted for battery on this basis. Well, in, fact, in this case, it was for GBH. But GBH is built on the fact that we have things like battery taking place. 
In addition to this, they was also uh, they also made a point that recklessness is also very important in terms of being able to establish the mens rea for an offence. They say the following. They say that the prisoner must be taken to have intended the natural consequences of what he did. This is a point of intention, of course. He acted unlawfully and maliciously. Not that he had any personal malice against a particular individual who was injured, but in the sense that doing uh, in the sense of doing an unlawful act calculated to injure 